wanted to invite you to take your Bibles with me this evening, and we'll turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 as we get started. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and you can look for verse 1. It's probably the easiest verse in the chapter for you to find. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 1 is where we're going to get started tonight. So, I don't know if you've ever seen these online, but there's there's these memes that go around uh, uh, that you... I hope you've seen some of them, because some of them are pretty funny. I don't know if they're all good, but uh, I've seen some that were, were kind of funny and amusing. And the meme is this. It usually go, has a caption that says, you had one job. <laughs> Have you ever seen those? Yeah. Yes. And so usually it'll be a picture of somebody who... Made a made a big mistake on a really simple job, <laughs> you know. Uh, I saw one where they had had a package of corn in the grocery store, and it had, you know they print out the little stickers to stick on them. It was sealed in shrink wrap, and it, it, it said watermelon on it, you know. Oh, Some of no. it's just really simple things like I had one job. How did you mess that up? It was so simple, <laughs> and uh, I think some of them are pretty funny. The truth is that in our Christian life, sometimes we can get so sidetracked with other things. But really, our walk with the Lord and our uh, ministry for the Lord, our service for the Lord, should be the thing that catches our focus. That we should not get sidetracked from other things that would easily distract us and pull us away. And I want us to think this evening about one job. We've got one thing that we can focus on tonight, and uh, we're going to see it in seven points. <clears throat> Starting in verse number one. It says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of, an, of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that he might learn in us not to think of my men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another, and what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as, though, as if thou hadst not received it? All right, let's pray, pray and ask God to guide our study tonight. Fathers, we open this powerful and helpful passage of Scripture. I pray that your Spirit would guide and direct in each word and each thought, that our lives would be helped and enabled, and that you would have free course in our lives tonight as we seek after you. We pray for your grace and help. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, the title of our study this evening is this, One Job. <laughs> one Job. And as I said, we're going to have seven points on our one job. Uh, we're going to see seven things in this passage this evening that I believe will be helpful to us as we focus on trying to keep our hearts focused on the one job that God has given us to do. The first thing we're going to talk about tonight is in verse number one, and that's serving. The Apostle Paul says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. You know what? The truth of the matter is it doesn't matter whether you're, you got saved yesterday or whether you're an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we're still just servants. He, he uses the word there, ministers. Uh, another Bible word for the word servants. They're used interchangeably in the scriptures. And that's the truth of the, the word of God. We are servants of the Lord. And as we labor, and as we do the work of the ministry, sometimes we can see things a different way, but so oftentimes we need to come back to this idea that we are just servants of the Lord, ministers of Christ. And every Christian can have a part in that. It's not just, when we use the word minister, sometimes people, especially in other denominations, get the idea of a minister, you know, somebody who's a, a leader in the ministry, a pastor or, or something of that nature. But a minister, really, is just a word for a servant, somebody who ministers and meets the needs of others. And in this particular life, we are ministering, uh, this particular aspect of life, we are ministering to the Lord. And I think that's so powerful because so many times we can get so caught up in ministering to people or ministering to our own needs or ministering to the needs of a ministry. But the truth is that we're not ministers of a ministry as much as we are ministers of Christ. Right. We are his servants, and it is him that we should serve and prioritize. Uh, we can get so caught up in a lot of other things and a lot of different perspectives and focuses. But the truth is if we will focus our lives on this one thing, serving Jesus, mm -hmm. making him happy, we'll be on the right track. Right. We are servants. Nothing more than that. 
Uh, it's easy because we see the Apostle Paul here and we might think, wow, you know, this is the Apostle Paul. He had a great position. He had great opportunity. He had great experience. He had great reputation. Uh, he had great influence for the Lord throughout the last 2,000 years. And yet at the same time, he says, if you want to do an accounting of who I am and what I'm worth, he says, just call me a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. That was what he saw in himself. He says, I am just a minister of Christ. The reason that he's writing this, if you look back just a couple of verses you'll find that there's an issue with different personalities in the church of Corinth. In verse 22 of the previous chapter, he says, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours and you're Christ's and Christ is God's. Early in chapter three, uh, he had been discussing an issue with this church in Corinth uh, where they had had some issues uh, in preferences among the personalities of the preachers. And sometimes people will get obsessed with one preacher over another and sometimes people will... will will raise one per person over another because of their personality or because of their preaching abilities or because of their skills and talents. Uh, and the Apostle Paul is writing to deal with this because he said some of them were saying, oh, you know, I was led to the Lord by, by Peter. Cephas, if you use the word used there. Oh, another one would be, I was led to the Lord by Apollos. Oh, yes, I'm special. Oh, and then there was, I was led to the Lord by... Who cares? <laughs> it's not about the personality who has ministered to you. And one of the greatest things that can happen... For a preacher of the word of God or a servant of the Lord is to be completely forgotten in and be um, eclipsed by the glory of Jesus Christ. And that's what we ought to seek. You know what? Uh, I like the, the new lettering we have on our wall behind me. We preach Christ. Amen. You know, this church isn't about you. This church isn't about me. This church is about serving the Lord. Amen. And every day of our life, that's what it needs to be about, serving Jesus. We are just servants, and we've been given a job by our master. The Lord Jesus Christ is our master, and he's given each of us a work to do. Right. And I'm thankful that God has given us the, the assignment. It's not designated by ourselves. It's not designated by the people around us. But we are servants and ministers of the Lord. And we have that opportunity to labor for him. Now, we might not all have the same ministries. We might not have all the same jobs. But we all have something that God has given us to do. It might be something he's given us to do in our home. It might be something he's given us to do in the community. It might be something he's given us to do in our uh, church ministry. But whatever opportunity God gives to you and to me, we need to see ourselves as ministers of the Lord who have been given our responsibility by our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. We ought every day to remember that we exist not for ourselves, but for him. Right. For his pleasure we are and were created, it tells us in uh, Revelation 4.11. We exist for his pleasure. That's the only reason you and I are here today. You can say, what's my purpose in life? Uh, making Jesus happy. Right. Bringing glory to the Lord. Right. We have a responsibility, and we can fulfill that responsibility as we walk with the Lord. I wanted us to see in the second half of verse 1 that he describes a little bit about what it means to serve the Lord. Because he says we are stewards of the mysteries of God. We are stewards, which means that we have been given something tremendous and given the opportunity to uh, use it and protect it for the Lord and for his glory. And as you and I serve the Lord, we have been given very much to work with for the Lord. Now, it talks about being stewards of the mysteries of God, and certainly the Apostle Paul had a tremendous ministry as a steward of the mysteries of God in that uh, he had a responsibility to take the truths that God was revealing to him as God was giving him inspired scripture to write. He was, he was given those truths, those mysteries of God, the truths that had not yet been fully explained yet, and he was revealing a lot of truth to the churches that, uh, that was needful for their growth and edification, just like God's word continues today to reveal truth to you and me. And as we labor for the Lord, we, not, we, are, we are stewards of those same truths. We are stewards of the same uh, record of scripture uh, that was given to the Apostle Paul and much more. We are able to take what has been given to us in the word of God and to steward it and care for it for the Lord's work. Now, not only are we stewards of the mysteries of God, but we're stewards also in a lot of other ways in our Christian life. Uh, we are stewards of the abilities that God has given to us. You know, God has given to each of us talents and abilities and uh, the, the, the 
born and given abilities that God has given to us are tremendously powerful. God does tell us in the scripture that he gives to each one of his children uh, special gifts in ministry and abilities to do certain things uh, that uh, it's not something we worked up, not something we necessarily uh, just produced by our effort, but that God gifts us to be able to do certain things in the ministry. And so we have these abilities and we need to be stewards of those abilities. We've also been given opportunities, opportunities. There are open doors all around us uh, that other people don't have access to. And we have been given opportunities in our lives, in the lives of those around us, in the ministry that God's given to us, in the community that God has given to us, in the point in history that God has given to us today. Uh, there are opportunities that other people will never see uh, and, and never have access to. And we take those opportunities, I think, too often for granted. We bypass those opportunities. We, we think, oh, it's not a big deal. It's not. No, but God has given those opportunities to you and to me as his children. We have been given that opportunity. And, of course, our resources. We need to be good stewards of our resources as well, uh, the earthly and financial things and, and the, the resources that we have. Should we, be, we should be good stewards of those things as we seek to serve the Lord, not to be uh, frivolous or reckless with what we've been given. And so God has given us this opportunity to serve as stewards. You know, we have been given so very much. Our lives are absolutely full of the blessings of the Lord, whether it be those, those mysteries of God, the truths of Scripture that we've been given to use and to share, whether it's the abilities, opportunities, and resources that we have in this life that we can use for the Lord. And so we've been given very much. And our first job, uh, our one job that we're talking about here, first of all, we see serving. And that's tremendously important. The second thing I wanted to focus on is in verse number two, and that connects to stewarding. Because in verse 2 it says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Now we've already talked about how God has given us much to steward, but at the same time I wanted us to focus on the fact that our job of being a servant and steward of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, requires us in one area to be especially attentive. And that is the area of faithfulness. Yeah. Faithfulness yeah. to the Lord. Yeah. We need to be faithful in our stewardship. Don't squander what God has given to you. Uh, there's so much that we have been given, we ought not to overlook those opportunities, abilities, and resources, and truths that God has put into our lives. Don't waste them. Don't squander them. Don't cast them aside as though they don't matter. Uh, don't just fritter them away on things of, of this life, but invest them for eternity. We know the parable that Jesus Christ gave of those servants who were given sums of money, and he expected them to invest them for his return. And you and I also have an opportunity to invest what God has given us to increase what we are able to give to the Lord at his coming. When we're able to stand before the Lord in that last day and see that God is able to be glorified through what we have done in our lives as he's worked through us. So we need to be faithful. We need to not squander what we've been given. We need to stay faithful and hold true. The word faithful uh, means that we've been given a responsibility and we're not going to drop the ball. This is sort of where we get that idea of you had one job, don't blow it. Right. You know, God has given us a, a responsibility in life. Don't blow it by getting sidetracked. Don't blow it by getting pulled away from what God has called us to do in our lives. The opportunities and the responsibilities that God has given to each of us is so tremendously important. May we not quit on what God has called us to do. The life that God has given to you, the life that God has given to me, we must stay faithful. Faithful. Don't quit. Don't be hit and miss, but in, in God's will, day in and day out, week in and week out, year in and year out, I want to be faithful to God's call in my life. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Oh, a faithful man, the Bible says, who can find? It's hard to find somebody whose who's speaking and doing is faithful. Uh, that's what God is seeking in you and in me. He wants us to be faithful. And I really believe this is one of the greatest keys to success in Christian life. <clears throat> Just keep doing it. Keep showing up. Keep doing right. Keep staying faithful. Keep honoring God. And keep following after him faithfully and consistently. And I believe that's true. That if we will keep doing what God has given us to do, that that is one of the tremendous keys in, of success in the Christian life. It's one of the great, great keys to success in just about anything. Keep doing it. <laughs> don't quit. Don't give up. Don't get sidetracked. Just faithfully continue on. As we walk with the Lord and, and steward what we've been given faithfully, that, that will bring, bring tremendous glory to the Lord in the end of our days. So we've been given this responsibility to steward faithfully what God has given to us. Uh, it's very easy 
to see the value of stewarding because you know what you can you can be careful and steward uh, for example your money very carefully but faithfulness is important because if you steward your money faithfully for a month and then blow it all you <laughs> if you keep going through that pattern every month or every two months you just blow everything well, you're not going to be faithful long term. You're not going to have success long term in stewarding your resources. If I'm faithful in my Christian life uh, here and there and hit and miss, I'm not going to succeed long term in my Christian life because it's always going to be that roller coaster up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. God wants us to continue faithfully with what he's given to us. We need to steward our lives and our opportunities faithfully. The third thing we're going to look at in verse 3 is God has given us this responsibility of ignoring certain things. Verse 3, but with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. And we'll stop there and pick up the rest of the verse uh, in the next point. But <clears throat> the Apostle Paul says, look, I'm not really worried about what you guys think. That's right. Yeah. And we saw that already in, uh, in our study this morning in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. The Apostle Paul wasn't worried about what they thought. They thought, oh, he might be just doing things in the flesh, or he might just be using his position of authority to try and push people around. He says, look, I'm not really worried about what you guys think of me. Right. And sometimes people will think things of you that are absolutely baseless mm -hmm. and unfair. Yeah. And you know what? Don't let that bother you. Don't let that bother you. It's good for us to just focus on who is my master. Mm -hmm. You know, the people around you are not your master. It's the right. Lord who's my master. It's the Lord who's your master. And if we will focus on that one job of serving him and stewarding for him what he's given to us, uh, we can put aside the distractions. Because so many times people are trying to serve the Lord and they can get so discouraged and frustrated because people around them are, are, are yapping at them and nipping at them and complaining about them and criticizing them and, 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 and hurting them. You know, don't worry about the people around you. Amen. Don't worry about the people around you. You're not their servant. That's right. You can thank the Lord for that. Amen. <laughs> the people who yip and complain and criticize, uh, be thankful that, that those people that harass you are not your boss. Amen. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. So <clears throat> we ought to ignore and not worry about what other people think of you and me. Mm -hmm. The truth is that we can trust the Lord, and that's the next yeah. thing. In the second half of verse 3 and in verse 4, we find our next responsibility in this one job we've been given. And that is <clears throat> to trust the Lord. Let's start in this last part of verse number 3. He says, Yea, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. He that judgeth me is the Lord. You know, we need to be very careful about introspection. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, I, I'm not going to try and, and judge myself. Because sometimes we can get introspective and we can just spend too much time dwelling on searching the motives of our heart and trying to understand our own selves. And we can get a little lost in the, own, the confusion of the, the twisted chasms of our own heart, those channels that run here, there, and everywhere in our own thoughts and our own minds. And just looking inwardly is not the solution. But... What Paul said is rather than trying to figure myself out, I let God explain what's right and what's wrong, and he can be the judge of where I stand in the truth. Right. He said, I'm not worried about the people around me. They're not my boss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is one boss that I answer to, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thankful for the Apostle Paul and his testimony here because he reinforces what he had taught the church in Rome mm -hmm. in Romans 14. And verse number four, he says, Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God shall make him to stand. You know what? Uh, to your own master you stand or fall. Uh, if you're doing right and if you're trying to honor God, if you have from your heart given your life to the Lord and you're trying to really obey God, don't worry about what other people say because you can trust the Lord. You can trust God to say, you know what, I, to the best of my knowledge and ability, I'm trying to serve the Lord. Yeah. I'm not trying to do evil. I'm not trying to reject the message of the Bible. I'm not trying to do my own thing. I'm going to trust the Lord. And the end of verse 4, he that judges me is the Lord. And that's a comfort to those who are genuinely seeking God. Now, it's scary to those who aren't, okay? <laughs> that's scary. To people who are faking it, look, if you're just faking it in the Christian life, just trying to impress people and just trying to get by and just trying to do your thing so everybody thinks you're special, guess what? The end of verse 4 should scare you. Amen. Because if you're just faking it, he that judgeth you is the Lord. Amen. And you can't fool him. That's right. 
in heaven, there's no shuffling the cards and trying to get things passed. It's the Lord who sees it all. Amen. He is the judge. He that judgeth me is the Lord. But you can trust God because you know what? God will approve faithfulness. Amen. God will bless faithfulness. Right. Those who are truly faithful to the Lord and are seeking to be stewards of the mysteries of God, seeking to serve the Lord faithfully and stay true to the truth of the word of God, stay true to what God has called them and given them to do, God will care for them. Amen. God will uphold them. And if you're seeking after God tonight from your heart in genuine faith, Amen. God will uphold you. It doesn't matter what people think. It doesn't matter what uh, your friends think, your family think, your, the other church members think, the people in the community think. If you're seeking after God from your heart, genuinely seeking the Lord, thank God he will uphold you. He will care for you. He will do right by you. God is our judge. Let God be the one to decide who's right and who's wrong. Because uh, in your life, you can trust the Lord. He will judge you faithfully. Amen. He's not going to be confused. He's not going to be misled. He's not going to He's not going to let anybody bribe him into believing their side of the story. Right. <laughs> you know what? God is just and fair. Mm -hmm. uh, he sees the truth in your life and mine. And as we labor in God's work, we can focus on our work for the Lord and, and leave the stress that comes from conflict with other people in the Lord's hands. We can just put that aside and say, I don't have to worry about that. The Lord knows what's going on. The Lord knows what's in my heart. And I can just trust the Lord and, and put aside the, the things the devil wants to use to distract us from that one work that God has given us to do. Right. Let us labor <clears throat> with a single-minded focus, mm -hmm. ignoring the attacks and opposition and trusting in God to care for who is right, care for what I'm doing, and that as I'm seeking after God, I can live by faith. Amen. Without faith, the Bible does in Hebrews 11, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe. You must believe certain things. You must believe that he is, and here's the one I want to focus on, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. You have to believe that if you're going to please God. You have to believe that. If you're going to labor abundantly in the Lord's work, you have to believe God will care for me if I just do right. right. If I trust the Lord and I obey the word of God and I'm seeking after the Lord, God will care for me. Amen. And that's the truth and confidence that you and I can have as we seek after the Lord together by faith. Uh, we can live in hope and confidence and assurance. Trusting the Lord because God will bless and approve his faithful children. The fifth thing we wanted to see tonight is this, waiting. Isn't that the hardest thing in the Christian life? Waiting. <laughs> waiting. <laughs> waiting. Oh, boy. In the summertime, we're waiting for the weather to cool off. In the winter, we're waiting for the, summer, the weather to warm up in the summertime. <laughs> in our struggles, we're waiting for them to be over. In our blessings, we're waiting for the next blessing. <laughs> you know, it's hard to wait in the Christian life. Mm -hmm. But yet, at the same time, God has called us very, very careful about timing in our lives and in our ministries. Right. In verse number, fifth, uh, verse number five, he talks about timing. Mm -hmm. In verse number five, it says, Wherefore, judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. It's very easy for us to want people to know the truth about us right now. Right? He's, he's telling us in verse 3, don't worry about what people think about you. Just ignore people's judgments of you. In verse number 4, he says, God will be your judge. And in verse 5, he's saying, don't be in a hurry. Understand that God will judge you faithfully in his time. In his time. Then, he sh says, in those last times, until the Lord come, then shall every man have praise of God. Those who have been faithful, those who have stood for Christ, our reward will come. But I'm afraid we'll have to wait for a while. For some of the reward. Now God does bless our faithfulness today. Yeah. Surely his faithfulness is, is so rich towards us. And his mercies are new every morning. And God is rich in our lives today. Mm -hmm. But some of the truth won't shine through just yet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we might be misunderstood. We might be misjudged. We might be attacked and abused in this life. And it might take till eternity comes. And we stand before the Savior for the truth to come. Because then the Bible says he will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. And he will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall every man pray, have praise of God. You know what? I... I am encouraged because I know that God will do right by his children. Amen. Those who are faithful to the Lord, God will stand by them. But we are encouraged here to be patient, to wait for God's timing. Uh, there are sometimes people will judge things before the time. 
sometimes people will judge us and they'll criticize and they'll complain about us and they'll attack us and abuse us because they think they're right and we're wrong. But you know what? We can be faithful and not get sidetracked with what other people are trying to do to us. God will judge us. God will uphold those who are right. And it might not all come out right now. But when the time comes, God will reveal the true motives of our hearts. You know what? There might be times you are genuinely trying to serve the Lord. You're genuinely trying to help. You're genuinely trying to minister to people and to carry the truth of the gospel and be a blessing and serve the Lord. And people said, oh, they're just doing it for pride or they're just doing it to get attention or they're just doing it for uh, for reputation and popularity or for their own wealth and, and, and gain. And, and you can't prove that to people. Mm-hmm. But that's okay. Because God sees and God will judge and God will bring it to light in the end. Amen. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. Amen. It might not be in this lifetime. But God will shine the light of truth. Mm-hmm. We need to be so encouraged as we wait uh, to allow God to be the judge in his time. Amen. We need to be very careful about that. Uh, I wanted to read a couple of verses to you from James chapter 4. It says, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? And and sometimes people will take that tack of judging everybody and speaking evil of everybody. Don't let that bother you. There is a judge. There is a judge. There's already Somebody's already got that job. They don't have it. Okay. Uh, they might be trying to steal God's job, but it's not their job. Amen. God has given that job to himself alone. He is the judge. Mm-hmm. He that judgeth me is the Lord. Amen. And he that judgeth you is the Lord. We can take comfort from that as we seek after God, as we labor. We can say, look, I've got this opportunity. I've got this responsibility. I'm trying to steward it for the Lord. I'm trying to make a difference for Christ and for God's glory in this world. I'm trying to influence people. I'm trying to be a blessing in my home, in my community, in my church, and and in my family. And as I labor in the Lord's strength, I'm trying to serve the Lord. And sometimes we face those abuses and we face those attacks. We face those criticisms. But God is still real for us. God is still the judge who will uphold his children as they labor in faithfulness. And we can wait on the Lord and on his timing, being very careful not to get involved in the judgment that others might be casting at us. You know what, if you if you are struggling with people judging you and attacking you and criticizing you and, and thinking wrong of you, the, the worst thing you could do is to do the same thing to them. Mm-hmm. And we need to be so mindful of that. We need to be very careful not to judge things. And you judge things, he says, judge nothing before the time. You know, there'll be a time when all the things will be sorted out. It's not you and I to figure it out because the counsels of men's heart and the hidden things of darkness will be revealed one day. Mm -hmm. And we won't know it all right now. There's a lot of things that are hidden things of darkness, but God will bring them to light. And as we we walk with the Lord, we can trust him enough to handle it. You know, you don't have to handle it. You don't have to fix everything. You don't have to fix everybody. God will handle it. God will care for it. As we trust in the Lord, we can take great courage and confidence knowing that the the judge of all the earth, as Abraham said, will do right. Mm -hmm. He'll do right. We can be confident and encouraged as we wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Waiting on God. You know what? Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Mm -hmm. Oh, but waiting is hard because our flesh is always in a hurry. I want it fixed right now. I want to have the blessings right now. I want to, I want to get it all right now. But if we will wait mm. on God's timing, he'll care for it all. He'll care for everything. There's no need for you and I to, to step outside our responsibility. Look, it's, it's not my job to be the judge. That's right. It's my job to be a servant of the Thank Savior. You. It's my job to be a steward of the mysteries of God Thank and to take what God has given me to do and to labor in it. So we've seen serving, stewarding, ignoring, trusting, and waiting. Sixthly, I'd like to see God has called us to understanding. Look with me again, if you will, at verse number six. It says, In these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes. He says, I'm, I'm using all of this to try and help you understand the situation with, between me and Apollos. They're both faithful servants of the Lord. But he says that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. Above that which is written. We need to look at life with a little bit of understanding. 
don't exalt anybody above that is written. And that's what Paul is trying to emphasize here in this passage. Jesus, we are just servants. Don't, don't set us up on some pedestal. Don't set us up on some high position and say, oh, the Apostle Paul. People are still doing that 2,000 years later, right? Oh, the Apostle Paul was super Christian. No, you know what? He was just a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ like you and I are. And we need to be very careful not to elevate certain people above that which is written. Because God has said that we are all on the same level. We are all servants of Christ. We are all stewards of the mysteries of God. There is no one that we should be lifting up above another. As you and I stand in the Lord's grace, the ground is still level at the foot of the cross. We need not look up to any other Christian in the sense of them being uh, more important to God than we are. You know what? God loves each and every one of his children. And as we stand in God's strength and God's grace, uh, we can be what God wants us to be. Mm-hmm. Heroes are still just people. Right. You know, they still have those feet of clay. <laughs> you know, they're still made of the same earthly dust that you and I were made out of. When God formed Adam out of the dust of the ground, he didn't make one breed of man and another breed of man. We're all descended from that same stock. We all have that same human flesh. We all have those same temptations and difficulties. There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. Amen. You know what? We are all in the same boat. Mm-hmm. As we labor, we should never lift people up above ourselves or above others to exalt one person over another. Mm-hmm. But now if we continue with the rest of verse number 6, and into verse number 7, we'll see our last point, and that is lowering. The last part of verse 6 says that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Mm -hmm. Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? Amen. You know what? Let's not be puffed up one against another because we're all just servants of the Lord. Amen. You know what? Every Christian who's trying to seek after God, we're all just servants of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know what? I have no right to think I'm better than anybody else. I've got no right to look down on anybody else. There's a reason that God said in Proverbs chapter 6 that, that in the list of six things that he hates and seven things that are an abomination to him, do you know what the first thing on the list is? A, a proud look. Right. A proud look. When we're looking down on everybody else and we're thinking we're better than everybody else, we're, we're, we have that pride in our hearts. We're just puffing ourselves up above uh, what is written and puffing ourselves up one against another. And that's tremendously dangerous because we can get so sidetracked with our glorified opinion of our own selves we can cause tremendous harm. He says, I love verse 7, For who maketh thee to differ from another? If there's any difference between you and another servant, who made that difference? Well, it wasn't you or me. Who wasn't that other servant that you're comparing yourself to? It's the Lord who made us. It's the Lord who enabled us. Right. He says, And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Is there any good thing in your life that you created out of nothing? <laughs> no. Every good thing in your life, every good thing in your life came from the Lord. Amen. James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from above, from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Uh, We need to lower ourselves to a right perspective and say, you know what? Every good thing that is in me is because of the grace of God. Amen. By the grace of God, Paul said, I am what I am. You know what? I'm nothing special because of who I am or where I came from or what I've done. It's the grace of God. I am just a servant to the Savior. You're not as special as you think you are. That's right. Amen. I know it's good for us to understand the grace of God and how much God loves us and how valuable we are to the Savior. Mm -hmm. But if we think we're special in a way beyond what other people are special, then we're completely wrong. Mm -hmm. Everything you have is received as a gift by grace. You know what? If we got what we deserved, have you ever heard somebody say, I just want what I deserve? <laughs> mm. I don't. Amen. Because the Bible tells me what I deserve. Amen. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death, and I've Amen. earned a lot of wages. Amen. And by the grace of God, I've been forgiven and cleansed, and I'm not going to get Amen. what I deserve. Don't ask God for what you deserve. Mm-hmm. What you and I deserve is the judgment of God Amen. for the many times we've wronged Him. Right. Many times we've, we've defied Him in our selfishness and pride. You and I deserve nothing of what we have. That's right. Nothing. That's right. You don't deserve your next breath. I don't deserve my next heartbeat. We don't deserve another day on earth. Mm -hmm. But 
God's been so good to us. Amen. Let's not lift ourselves up as though we're something special. Mm -hmm. Because what do we have that we didn't receive? Right. You know what? If I get a gift, I can't boast on, oh, I am so special. I got, no, it's the person who gave me the gift who should be getting credit. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the better the gift is. Mm -hmm. I received some nice gifts in my life. Mm -hmm. But I don't get the glory for them. That's right. Those who gave those gifts are the ones who should get the credit. They bought them. They, in their generosity, gave them. Okay, that's between them and the Lord. That's nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. We are definitely not better than anybody. Right. And that's what I, why I believe this is connected with this passage, because we are still just servants of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And no one servant needs to lift himself up above another servant, mm -hmm. pretending that they're better, pretending that they are different. Mm -hmm. We can lie to ourselves, mm -hmm. but we won't fool God. Amen. In Galatians 6 and verse 3, it says, For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Do you ever get to start thinking that you're something? That you're somebody? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's dangerous. You're yeah. lying to yourself. That's right. Anytime I think that, I'm lying to myself and deceiving myself. If you think you're something when you're nothing, mm -hmm. you're fooling yourself. Right. And probably nobody else. Sorry to break your bubble. Right. <laughs> Usually the people who think they're something aren't fooling anybody else. Mm -hmm. We need to have a right perspective of ourselves in the sight of the Lord. Because if we start getting so focused on ourselves and our abilities and our needs and our deservings, we can get so pulled aside from the ministry that God has given to us to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And every day of our lives wake up saying, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Amen. Right. That needs to be the cry of our hearts every day. Lord, you are Lord. Amen. What wilt thou have me to do? How can I serve you? How can I... Make today all about Jesus. Rather than being puffed up, mm -hmm. oh, we should be thankful. Amen. Thankful for the goodness and grace of God. Oh, we have received so very much in our lives. Our lives are jam-packed with the blessings of God. Amen. And if you and I will see the perspective of Scripture, we can also see the perspective of the Apostle Paul. He says, so let a man account of us. Right as of the ministers of Christ mm -hmm. and stewards of the mystery of God. Remember we started off in verse 1 there, talking about what God has given us to steward? Mm -hmm. Then in verse 7, we come back to that again. What hast thou that thou didst not receive? Amen. You know, sometimes we can get so puffed up in what we've done and what we've accomplished and what we're doing and what we have, but, but you didn't get it anyways. Mm -hmm. Remember we talked about stewards of the mystery of God? God has given us a lot of truths. And we're stewards of to give. Sometimes we can get pretty proud of ourselves because of the things we know and understand about the scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, especially people if you have an opportunity to preach or to teach the word of God to anybody, you need to guard against that feeling like you're special because you found that in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know what? You didn't write the Bible and That's you didn't right. reveal the Bible. Right. <laughs> that was God, okay? Amen. I like how one preacher I've heard say this many times. He says, I didn't write it. I just recite it, okay? <laughs> um, Amen. And that's why when people say to me, oh, pastor, thank you for that message, I'll say, praise the Lord, <laughs> because yeah. I didn't write it, and I didn't reveal it, I didn't discover it, mm -hmm. I'm just telling you what the Lord gave. Amen. And that's the focus we need to have. Sometimes we get so sidetracked by focusing on our own abilities, mm -hmm. our talents, our skills, but remember, God gave those to you. That's right. Sometimes we can get so excited with the opportunities that we have. Like, we're special, that we have these special opportunities because we are so talented and we're so used to the Lord. The, the opportunities are of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I can't create opportunities. I can't create anything, much less opportunities. They're intangible things. You can't create them and form them by the power of man's hands. And what about our resources? Mm -hmm. Nothing that you and I have in the physical life came from ourselves. That's right. Everything came from somebody else. Amen. You know, when you, when you and I were born in this life, we all we were all born in the same way, with nothing. Mm -hmm. No resources whatsoever. Right. God has given us all these things. Mm -hmm. Let's be thankful, rather than impressed with ourselves. Thankful for what? For the blessings? For the opportunities? For the abilities? Yes, but also thankful for the opportunity Amen. to use them for the Lord and to be a servant Amen. of Christ. That's 
There is no higher calling in life than to do what God has called you to do. Amen. And it might not be the same thing God's called me to do, but whatever it is God has given you to do as a servant of the master, there is nothing greater, nothing greater you can do with your life than to wholeheartedly, faithfully pursue that gift and calling of God Amen. with all that is in you. Amen. Don't let the other things sidetrack you. Don't let judgments and criticisms and attacks of people and what everybody else thinks about you sidetrack you. Don't worry about who's better and who's worse and, and, and getting ahead or, or being left behind. Just, just focus on this one thing. I am a servant of the Lord. Amen. How can I do that more effectively mm -hmm. and be faithful from today? You know, forgetting those things that are behind. From today, I want to be faithful from today until that day I stand before my Savior. Right. Let's seek to be faithful to the Lord. Yeah. I wanted to share something with you. Some of you have heard this before, but I really like this. I don't know who wrote this, but it's some, it's called Keep At Your Work. And I thought this really connected with our theme tonight. It's a bit lengthy, but I hope it challenges and encourages your heart as much as it does mine. Keep at your work. It says, The Lord has given to every man his work. It is his business to do it, and the devil's business to hinder him if he can. So sure as God has given you a work to do, Satan will try to hinder you. He may present other things more promising. He may allure you by worldly prospects. He may assault you with slander, torment you with false accusations, set you to work defending your character, employ pious persons to lie about you, editors to assail you, and excellent men to slander you. You may have Pilate and Herod, Annas and Caiaphas all combined against you, and Judas standing by you, ready to sell you for 30 pieces of silver. And you may wonder why all those things come upon you. Can you not see that the whole thing is brought about through the craft of the devil, to draw you off from your work and to hinder your obedience to God? Keep about your work. Do not flinch because the lion roars. Do not stop to stone the devil's dogs. Do not fool away your time chasing the devil's rabbits. Do your work. Let liars lie. Let sectarians quarrel. Let corporations resolve. Let editors publish. Let the devil do his work, but see to it that nothing hinders you from fulfilling the work that God has given you. He has not sent you to make money. He has not commanded you to get rich. He has never bidden you to defend your character. He has not set you at work to contradict falsehood, which Satan and his servants may start to peddle. If you do those things, you will do nothing else. You will be at work for yourself and not for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Keep about your work. Let your aim be as steady as a star. Let the world brawl and bubble. You may be assaulted, wronged, insulted, slandered, wounded, and rejected. You may be abused by foes, forsaken by friends, and despised and rejected of men. But see to it with steadfast determination, with unfaltering zeal, that you pursue the greatest purpose and object of your being, until at last you can say, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Amen. You have one job. Mm -hmm. One job. Right. Be faithful. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to focus our lives upon that one job of just serving you. Mm -hmm. May all the chatter around us not pull our attention aside from focusing purposely and doggedly upon that one attention that you've given to us as we labor for you, that we could live with a life that would bring glory to the name of our Savior, that we stand before our Savior one day, that those hidden things, those counsels of the heart, when they're brought to light, that we would have praise from you for what went on in the most hearts and thoughts of our lives. Lord, help us as we labor for you, that all would be done in faithfulness and honesty, humbly seeking to serve you from the heart, not getting pulled aside by any other thing. Mm -hmm. Bless our hearts as we seek after you, we pray in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen.